So we're here with the Surface Pro 3 on the left and the Surface Pro 4 on the right to do a long-term load and throttling test. And the way I'm going to do that in this uh, video is to run through um, a fixed set of video rendering, um, which includes CPU and Intel QuickSync as well, so using the GPU as well. It's a test that I've personally done before. But before I do that, I want to show you um, our results from the Notebook Check lab tests, uh, Surface Pro 3 versus Surface Pro 4 in terms of long-term load heat. Now on the left of the screen, you're going to see there the Microsoft Surface Pro. And we got a maximum of 46.4 out of that. Now let's put the Pro 4 scores up and you can see it gets a lot hotter spread over a wider area. In fact, 50.8, uh, 52.3, sorry, is the highest we measured uh, on the front with 51.4 on the back. The Surface Pro 4 has a different uh, thermal cooling mechanism. It has a fan system, plus it has a liquid-based thermal spreader as well. And that's that spreader that's uh, taking the uh, heat and spreading it out across the front and the back of the of the system, mainly on the back actually. What it also means is that um, turbo boost can last for longer because there's no one part of the system that's really heating up to the limits. And um, when it hits the limits, of course, turbo boots backs off and then you get throttling, which is what we've seen on the Surface Pro 3. And we're going to demonstrate that in this, in this video and show you how the Surface Pro 4 uh, continues to operate at full processing power, full turbo boost. And in the test, you'll see the, well, at the end of the test, you'll see the percentage advantage that the Pro 4 had over the Pro 3. And we'll discuss a couple of the results, uh, including noise and the heat felt on the back of the devices. So let's get into the test. So we're using Cyberlink PowerDirector 12 here. It's not really important which program is used, just that it's a program that gives it long, gives it long term CPU and GPU load. Um, we've got a, a video edit that's 8 minutes 20 seconds long and you can see there's a number of timelines there, a number of channels. We're doing uh, overlays, cuts, imaging, um, we're doing filtering, we're doing enhancements, we're doing a whole lot of stuff that uh, will be done by GPU and uh, CPU as well and Intel QuickSync. So um, a big mix of CPU and GPU activities there. Let's kick that off and see how it goes. So we're going to output uh, 1080p, 50 frames a second, 18 megabits uh, per second. And uh, well, that doesn't really matter as long as they're both the same. I'm going to put the previews on for the rendering as well. And we'll hopefully be able to start those both at the same time. So on the left, Surface Pro 3. On the right, Surface Pro 4. And it's going to take a little while to run through this. Um, I will uh, check through. Sorry, I'll fast forward through a few sections of this, but already you can see the Surface Pro 4 beating the Surface Pro 3. Now remember, the Pro 3 is running at 100%, so 2.4 gigahertz, both cores under turbo boost. On the right, the uh, Surface Pro 4, Core i5 again, will be running with its maximum turbo boost. Um, you can already see that it's, it's ahead. I'm gonna check some temperatures on the back. Both of these are mains powered. There's nothing more than ambient heat on, on the back. I'm just detecting a little bit of heat on the Surface Pro 3 in this area here, and that's starting to get a bit warmer. And again here on the Surface Pro 4, just starting to get a little bit warm across this, but it's much more spread out than on the Pro 3, which I can locate almost to finger point accuracy on the back. So both devices are warming up, and that's good because we want to work, we want to see how these devices um, cope with uh, being too hot, basically. Now I'm going to bring up the uh, task, task manager on each, each one, and we'll be able to start to look at the CPUs, and I'll zoom into these. Um, we'll lose uh, some of the um, time on the video, but uh, right, let's put those there. And so here's the Pro 4 running currently at 2.87. Here's the Pro 3, 2.58 gigahertz. Remember, Haswell generation and Skylake generation. So there is a little bit of CPU performance improvement, even at the same clock speeds for these two devices. Still running at 100%, but of course the Surface Pro 3 
is a little bit ahead. I'm just trying to look at the amount of time that's been rendered. We are, it's difficult to see, 1 minute 31 into that. Obviously the Surface Pro 3 a little bit behind and that's 1 minute uh, 11 on that. So we're already a bit ahead on the um, on the Surface Pro 4. Let's set, let that run through for you and in a minute I'll start to talk about the noise that's being generated. In fact, just trying, I can feel something Somewhat, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to put my ear to this. <laughs> the Pro 3. Pro 3 has started to kick on, uh, put up, uh, turn up its fans. I can feel the heat coming out the side. And that heat point here in the middle is starting to get quite warm. So this Pro 4 has a heat point around this area here on the back. So it's a bigger heat point and there's also some heat that's spread across the back as well. Notice that the Surface Pro 3 is now running at 2.08 gigahertz, the Pro 4 running at 2.87 gigahertz. So we're starting to see some reaction to the, ther to the heat here. Turbo may be down clocking. It might also be that it's a section of video that uh, doesn't need so much CPU, but we'll wait and see. Now, Surface Pro 4. Yeah. I think has just started to, yeah. I'm just gonna move you slightly apart for this section of the video. Yeah, because both of those fans are on now, the Pro 4 and the Pro 3. Now the interesting thing to note here is that the Pro 4 is louder than the Pro 3. Um, that's basically because it's trying to exhaust the heat more than the Surface Pro 3 is. Uh, that's not a bad thing um, because it means that if you want Turbo Boost, you get Turbo Boost for a long time. And if you're rendering a video, um, I don't think you're gonna be worried about the noise. If you're playing a game, on the other hand, then the noise might be an issue, but uh, you could also be wearing headphones, and that might not be an issue as well. I think gamers are going to prefer long-term 100% performance rather than short-term uh, high performance, and then it down clocking. I'm going to zoom in now on this part of the. Um, I hope you can see that. The. Can you see that? On that graph there. It is starting to go down, and you can see if we just go down here, we're at 1.8 gigahertz on the clock. And I'm just want to, I'm going to do this in one take, but you can see that the processor has gradually started to drop down. If we slip over, uh, switch over to the Pro 4, you see that that is level at 100%, and we just go down to the CPU speed there, 2.87 gigahertz. Now both of these are really really starting to get noisy now and I'm going to do a heat test Pro 4 has really has really got warm across the back the Pro 3 has got quite warm a little bit warmer in one area but the rest of it is in fact this area over here where my hand is here is actually cool cool to the touch so you can see that the concentration of heat heat there has uh, affected the uh, processor speed now we're still at 100% here, but let's just give you a check of how much has been done. So at this point, um, we have got uh, five minutes, five seconds done on the Pro 4. On the Pro 3, we have three minutes, 37 seconds done. So the Pro 4 is, is well ahead of the Pro 3 at this stage. Just going to pause this video and we'll come back to it uh, a little bit uh, further on in the rendering process towards the end to give you a final uh, impression of the heat, the noise and the speed differences. Okay, let's take another look into what's happening on the CPU there. Surface Pro 3 is up to 2.03 gigahertz now. 
Pro 4, we're still at 2.87 gigahertz, 100% CPU utilization. So it's still going at 100% CPU and turbo boost power. So we're getting towards the end here. Surface Pro 4 still working at 2.87 gigahertz. It has been an elapsed time of about 10 minutes now. And um, very warm across the back, pretty noisy from the Surface Pro 4. Over at the Surface Pro 3 here, we're still at 2.8 gigahertz. We are just having a closer look at that. We are only five minutes, 55 rendered from the eight minutes uh, 20 so it's still a lot to go there and we're just coming up to the end on the surface pro 4 still running at 100 percent nice and warm on the back uh, and there it's finished with a time of 10 minutes 44 seconds so that's 10 minutes 44 seconds for the surface pro 4 and if we just take a look at the pro 3 you can see that's how far it's got to go. Still got another 25% to go, so it could be another two and a half, uh, two and a half minutes or so. Obviously, that indicates a 25% improvement over the, sorry, Surface Pro 4 over the Surface Pro 3. But we'll just let that run through. Still that very hot spot on the back there. <laughs> the left-hand side at the back is still cool. And we're real, still only at 2.05 giga, gigahertz. Um, ambient temperature in this room. Um, if I can find my thermometer somewhere. Is. Well, I think it's about 19 20, or 20 degrees. It's a fairly cool studio. And I've only been in there for about an hour with the heating on. So I think it's about 19 or 20 degrees. If you're working in a, hot, a warmer environment, 22, 23 degrees, you'll see the Surface Pro 3 uh, cut back even further than it's uh, showing here. 18.6 degrees ambient temperature here. And we're nearing the end for the Surface Pro 3. We'll zoom in on the final score in a minute. But just note that uh, at the peak of the throttling on the Surface Pro 3, the Surface Pro 4 was running at around 50% more clock on the CPU. So that's a really significant difference on CPU uh, performance while the Surface Pro 3 was being throttled down. That has... Wait for it, still going for it. Let's see if we can just zoom in on the final score there. Time elapsed 15 55. 15 minutes 55. If we go over to the Service Pro 4 and have a look at that, you can see that that was 10. 10.44. So if I've done my maths correctly, that is the Surface Pro 4 at 33% faster than the Surface Pro 3. Sorry, Surface Pro 4 at 33% faster than the Surface Pro 3, which gives you 50% longer rendering times, if you reverse that little equation, than on the Surface Pro 3 than on the Surface Pro 4. So that 33% improvement means you're saving yourself or you're, you're going to be 50% longer on the Surface Pro 3 than the Surface Pro 4. So over that um, 8 minute 20 second render which took 1044 took another 5 minutes on the Surface Pro 3. That's quite significant and at the second half, during the second half of that render, and this is the important bit, the differences were even higher. We were seeing a 50% different clock or a 40 to 
uh, higher clock on the Surface Pro 4 than on the Surface Pro 3. So for even longer term rendering, and for gaming, where the C the Pro, Pro 3 is throttling, the Pro 4 is going to be more than 33% faster. Uh, the 33% figure actually matches two tests I did separately before this video, actually yesterday. 35% uh, was what I measured on this test yesterday. And if I turn Intel QuickSync off and only run on the CPU, um, exactly the same. So QuickSync doesn't um, help the Surface Pro 3. It's still going to generate uh, enough heat to throttle it anyway. So a fairly long test for the Surface Pro 4, Surface Pro 3, but I hope that demonstrates the throttling that occurs in the Pro 3 and the longevity of turbo boost on the Surface Pro 4. Look at it another way. You may only have... Uh, a small clock increase on the Surface Pro 4 versus the Surface Pro 3 but when it comes down to turbo boost and throttling then the difference becomes much much bigger. Thanks for watching if you've got any questions put them down the bottom in the comments on YouTube and I'll do my best to answer those uh, for you. We've got the Surface Pro 3 4 for another few days we'll probably try and do um, if you can just see in the back there, just quickly zoom in, what's that there? That is the docking station for the Surface Pro uh, 4 and 3. So I'll run through that for you in a video over the next 48 hours. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video and we'll see you on the next one.